What's up y'all, Elisha from Uncle Kendama and we're here with a Kendama review. This is long awaited. I've had these Kendamas for months now and I'm ready to give you guys a really good review on the Analog Kendamas 2021 shape. I do wanna clarify in the beginning of the video, yes, I did get these for free from Analog Kendama. That will not change how objective I'm going to be in this video. If I bought these Kendamas, opinion would have been the same. Let's get this started off, what you're gonna get in the packaging. In the packaging, you're gonna get an analog bag, stickers, depending on what kind of drop you're gonna get. So like maybe the Valentine's one that's about to come up up in a couple days or some other kind of special drop. You have special stickers. Uh, here's some daydream stickers that I got with my last analog Kendama thing. You're gonna get an extra string, extra bead, not an extra bearing because your Kendama should come with one already. And you should also have an extra string tool in there. You can never have enough of those. All basic essentials with Kendamas nowadays, all good stuff. Yeah, that it's basic. As we get into the design of the Kendamas, uh, it's gonna vary depending on what you get. Here I have these splices right here. Uh, this right here is that Zebrano purple heart splice right here, which is pretty freaking beautiful. And then we also got this quail, but instead of the ebony, because ebony is an endangered wood species now, we got that wenge, which is also beautiful. In terms of paint designs, there's a bunch of different kinds of colorways they have. They have fades. They also have like 70-30 splits, half splits. They have a bunch of different stuff that they come out with periodically. They're also well known for the squiggly line, uh, known as the daydream. It's always gonna be called the daydream. You'll know what it is when you see it. It's a cool design that are on some of the condoms as well and they've been using it continuously for like the last year. In terms of design on the Ken, you're gonna get the awesome analog logo that's right here. Also analog has, you know, the portal down there as well. In the portal, they also have some lasering. Uh, this is only a test, which they're also well known for. And that's about it. If you have a cooler, you know, special release thing, you might have some other laser things on the Ken, but uh, as of mine, I just have the analog logo, which it's perfect, it's clean, and it's nice in there. Let's go over how these things play. And I'm gonna tell you these Ken play awesome. These Kens are so well-rounded. Let's start with just the balance tricks. Balance tricks are really nice. All the cups are not overly huge, uh, but I would say they're pretty up to standard to today's shape, but they don't feel overly big. Let's say like a Lotus Kendama. Those are huge cups, not this. Lotus cups are way bigger than this, but they're not small by any means. Lunars are always gonna be locked in because of this. Lighthouse is not a problem at all. Uh, also, depending on what kind of uh, wood combo you get, um, for these two right here, the Serratos are definitely heavier because of the uh, Purple Heart on this one and then the uh, Wenge on this one. So that might also change how your lunar balances as well. When it comes to juggling Ken flips and any kind of flip, this Kendama is also great. It's not wobbly, it doesn't feel weird when you flick it. I always feel like I'm in complete control whenever I'm I'm doing Ken flips, gunslingers, all that stuff, especially the in hand feeling when you're doing juggles or any kind of late Ken flip. That is always good. It's not abnormal or anything. It's nothing special, but it just feels great. In terms of gunslingers, we have a really nice contact point between the cup and the sword right here. You're gonna lock in your slingers. Unless you have a really, 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 really big hand, you might find some issues, but I have normally sized hands and gunslingers lock in perfectly. It's an awesome slinger shape, even with the portal that they're well known for. When it comes to stalls, uh, that's gonna depend on wood. So this Zebrano on Zebrano is pretty freaking soft and good for stalls. Maple on maple, it's pretty much what you think it is if you played a maple on maple. Um, it kind of depends on how dense the maple is. This one's kind of soft, so I got some nice stalls on this one. Stall points aren't anything crazy or unique, but they get the job done and everything's nice. If you get your cups low enough, uh, I would say on underbirds, uh, you'll definitely get a lock-in. If you get the Serato to fit perfectly down there, you'll be able to lock in your stalls uh, kind of crazy, so. Yeah, that's always nice. When it comes to paint, obviously this one's a natty, so it's gonna play like a natty. Zebrano, it gets soft as you play it really hard. Maple, that's gonna you know break in like maple. Uh, I have this bricked, so that's gonna play like brick. Review coming out on brick soon. Analog's paint options other than brick, which is a specialized one, which I don't really count as uh, analog because it's an in-house thing made by Adrian. A short breakdown of both the paints. ET paint is gonna play really good on most woods and it's gonna hold up pretty well on all of them. I would say on Ash, it's kind of a 50-50, but on the recent releases, it seems like it's holding up fine. When it comes to the satin paint, it's really, really, really good. It's very, very rippy and stuff. I would say it bonds pretty decently to all the woods. I think it's most exceptional on beach, and it's very, very, very exceptional when you have the bottom as natty with no paint underneath. Satin analog paint with natty is... Mm. 
so, so good. Quick comparison with the Kendama that most people have. Here's a Sweets Boost right here. And then uh, if we compare the big cups, basically the same size. When it comes to small cups, I would give the edge to the Analog Kendama by just a little bit. When it comes to the base cup, they're actually the same size as well. So yeah, all the cup sizes are basically the same to a boost. This Dama, when it comes to construction, it's uh, pretty basic. So it's not overly skinny in the sword area. It's not overly big in the cup area at all. And it really allows for this really balanced feeling when you're playing with this Kendama. Now let's move into comp. Would I recommend this for competitions? And I would say 100% yes. Because it's so well-rounded, I would take this in freestyle. I would take this in your speed ladder. I would take this in your open division. I would do it completely. I got fourth place with this Kendama, so I don't know if that helps you in telling how good it is, but... Yeah, I trust this Kendama in battle for sure. When it comes to comparison with other shapes today, and there are a ton of different shapes, but if we get to the bare bones versions of all those, so let's say Pop, uh, the Hass with some Kusa, or the radars from Sweets. This is about double the price, but I think that is amazing. You're definitely getting your money's worth, especially with these. I think these came out with for like 40, $45, and for a splice kendama with this quality, I think that is amazing. 35 bucks for Saturn or ET, Maple Ken, also a really good deal if you can hop on that. It might be even lower depending on how they want to price things, or any kind of like splice wood thing around 40, $45, uh, or maybe 50 upwards of there. I think it's a good price. In a day and age where we have, you know, companies charging pretty high for just, you know, a design that's probably gonna come off, these are very good bang for your buck, especially for the quality. We're talking quality, the paint holds up well. The designs are sick, but not doing too much. Tracking is great, that's gonna vary on what design you get. The balance and stuff, again, varying on what wood you get, but overall is gonna be very, very good. My overall thoughts on this Kendama, definitely a must cop. The shape is super duper balanced. It's super duper good overall, and it excels at a lot of different tricks. It's good for all levels of Kendama players, especially for Kendama players that are kind of moving away you know, their next step, getting past a radar, getting past a pop, getting past a Kusa half split. I would believe this is the best Kanama to pick the next step after when you level up. Those are all my thoughts on the Analog 2021 shape. If y'all have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below or DM me on Instagram. I'm always open to taking DMs on my Instagram about anything Kanama related. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. Hit the post notifications so you can be one of the first to watch these videos when they come out. Also share the video with your friends because it goes a long way for the channel. This is Elijah Malko Kanama signing out. Peace.